Have you ever taken part in a math competition? Today, we will catch up with Stephen. He is the deputy director of the UK Mathematics Trust, which is a charity that runs math competitions and many other activities to promote problem solving. When I was at school, I thought I would study computing when I got to university because I really enjoy programming. But my maths teacher suggested that I think about studying maths because she thought I would really enjoy studying maths at university, which is a bit different to how school maths is. How? How's, what's the difference between school and uni? Well, I think in school there's a lot of learning processes and then practising exam questions which are fairly similar to, to ones you've seen before. Whereas at university, there's more emphasis on solving problems that you've not seen before and, and that's really what maths is about. I, I didn't do particularly well in my first year at university and I think that was because I hadn't really realised this difference about what studying maths was really about, that it is about problem solving and, and not so much about learning processes. After I got that, I did much better in the subject and uh, ended up with a first class honours degree and, uh, and I was the first person in my family to go to university so if I can do it then anyone can really. But can you solve all the maths puzzles that you see? Definitely not, um, at least not to begin with and I think lots of people don't appreciate that there are so many unsolved problems still in maths and new questions are being asked all the time. And that's what I find really exciting about maths is, is solving a problem, getting to grips with a hard puzzle and then finally working out a solution. So you work with math puzzles every day, have you got a favourite puzzle to share with us? So Hannah and I will have a go. I do, yeah. I, I'm kind of spoiled for choice, but I've got a nice problem from one of this year's competitions. We have 16 counters. They are black on one side and white on the other. Initially, they're arranged in this configuration here, all black side facing up. And we are to make a sequence of moves that finishes with the counters in this sort of checkerboard pattern. Now, the rule is that each move you're only allowed to turn over a two by two square of counters. So you can't turn over an individual counter at once, only a two by two square of four at once. The problem is to find the shortest sequence of moves that will do that and to prove that it's the shortest possible sequence of moves. Hmm. Right. Yeah, don't worry, that doesn't sound easy to me either, Good. if that makes you feel better. <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better. Okay, so uh, for instance... Let's try and have a go, yeah. We can turn it flip this way. Yeah. And then symmetry, so do it on the other. Yeah. Uh, please, Stephen, help us. Can you give us a hint? Okay, so a, a good thing to realise about this problem is that it doesn't make sense to turn over the same 2x2 two two square more than once um, because for example if you turn over this 2x2 two two square and then this 2x2 two two square and then this one again then that's just the same as only turning over this 2x2 two two square. Alright, so I think we did make a mistake, sorry for destroying this. Look at that! <laughs> yeah, we did it! <laughs> now it is your turn. Have a go. Keep in mind Stephen's hint. And most importantly, do not expect that you will solve it at the first go. 